Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number 302. So there are a bunch of business questions that are amazing that I want to get to. One of the questions actually had to do and asked me about Enemy in terms of if I were starting Enemy from scratch, how would I go about marketing it if I didn't have like the platform that I do, which brings me to something else I want to talk about first, which is me selling the company Enemy. So here's the story. <laughs> um, a few weeks actually, what was it, two weeks ago, I had a call with a company, online company, that basically is a marketplace for online businesses, e-commerce businesses. The website is called Empire Flippers. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, I'd go and check it out. It's a pretty cool platform where if you are somebody that wants to basically buy an e-commerce business, you can go and see what they have. I didn't know like what they did until I actually talked to them, which I'll talk about in a second. But the bottom line is that over the course of the past, I go, I guess I've had Enemy now for a little over two years. Um, it has been a good business. It has been a hard business. It's been harder than I thought it would be, honestly. Um, you know, there are a lot of different factors and, and aspects to why it's a challenging business. One of the reasons is because over the course of the past two years, the reason and the way that we've been able to sell them is me talking about them and driving traffic to a website. And so, you know, things have been good. And if, if Enemy was a business that somebody owned, like a single person, they'd be killing it, right? They'd be making a lot of money, it's profitable, it's a good business. But that being said, for somebody that already has other businesses that are doing much more in terms of revenue, it's a little bit of a distraction and I've treated enemy a little bit like a stepchild, right? I'm like, not that, not that like stepchildren are bad or always treated poorly, but it's kind of just how I thought about it. It's like, okay, Pete and Pedro, T. Shanley, YouTube, like, like doing really great. Enemy was doing good, but it would really move the needle when I would do any type, when, it, when I would do a promotion or some type of like email blast or whatever. And so what I ended up doing was um, I hired a, a guy that I, that I was helping me with like Instagram that I've known for a long time. I reached out to Paul and I said, hey Paul, what would you think about coming on and helping me basically manage and you know, try to build the company enemy? He's like, great, let's do this. And so at the beginning when he actually came in, it was, it was more challenging than we realized, right? We thought that we could run some paid ads. We thought that we could really kind of like, you know, get these sunglasses on people's faces and, and it would be almost like a, a self-fulfilling financial prophecy in terms of sales. It did not end up that way. It is more challenging than I realized in order to sell these sunglasses. I have not figured out the paid traffic mechanism the way that I need to in order to basically really scale this business. In order for me to really sell stuff, I need to sell it, right? Now, the good news is that the product is amazing. We've done a lot of like homework preparing for success, right? We have um, trademarks on Enemy for sunglasses, also clothing. Uh, bought the domain enemy.com, which was the, co the cost of the website was I think like $45,000. Um, also have design patents for enemy sunglasses. I went to my attorneys because my manufacturer actually reached out and said, hey, congratulations. I said, why? I said, well, apparently your styles are popular because we had three people this month reach out to say, hey, will you manufacture these and stamp our logo? And they're like, uh, just wanted to let you know that you might want to get a design patent on these styles because apparently you have you've made styles that people think are sexy. And so I said, great. And so I spent you know, thousands of dollars to get design patents on three of the styles, the enemy ones, twos, and threes. And so we've been doing a lot of things like back end, but it still was apparent and evident to me that this is a lot of heavy lifting and to really scale this business and make it something that I'm like super excited and passionate about, it's gonna take a lot of work. And I was toying around with the idea of, is this work something that I am capable and ready to put into it? You know, when I, when I hired Paul, I thought, okay, maybe Paul can, can kind of figure it out and, and make things happen and this will be a way that we can scale this company. It didn't turn out that way. He's been doing amazing. We've been really boosting up our social media and doing a lot of great things, but there's still that, that, that next level, like to go from like a million to like, like, like more, right? 
haven't figured that out yet. And so I was talking to Ryan, Eric, and Antonio in one of our weekly um, Area 627 calls, and I'm like, I just don't know like what to do. I don't know. And they're like, well, have you thought about selling it? I'm like, well, no. Like, who would buy it, right? And they're like, well, there are a lot of places online that, that you can sell online businesses, and you'd be surprised at how valuable they actually are. And so I was like, all right, let me look into this. And just for information, because I had never, I have never sold a business. I have no idea how it works, how the process works. One of the downsides to selling a business for me though, especially with Enemy, is that, and one of the reasons why I was very reluctant to actually think about it, was that all the collateral, all the imagery, all the videos, all the content is me. And so if I were to actually sell this business, I would have to figure out some way to either, you know, keep a little piece of it so that I get some value of, of, of having my image and my, my sales pitch all over the place because that's one of the downsides is that they could just literally you know, buy the company, say they bought the company for $3 million or $2 million or whatever it is, and I'm done, it's like, all right, two million, here are the keys, right? And then they're like, great, and we have all the collateral, and then all of a sudden I just start, they've got a lot of money, and they just start running ads with me, and it would, could potentially be a disaster. But I started looking at this one company, Empire Flippers, and I was looking at some of these values of some of these companies, and they had this little like sheet or this, this program where you can actually plug in your numbers, you know, what, what your sales are, what your this are, what that is, and, and it will actually like auto-generate a value for your company. And so I did that and I was like, damn, like that's pretty awesome. So let me talk to them. So I, so I set up a call. So we start talking and the guy at Empire Flippers starts telling me a little bit more about this company, Empire Flippers, and how they typically work. So apparently they've got a huge pool of people that have like, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars that just want to buy e-commerce business that are kind of like set it and forget it, where it's a business that you have figured out either the traffic game or the sales game and you are just basically printing money. You're throwing advertising dollars, you're getting X number of advertising dollars back. Kind of like the dream scenario, right? A lot of the companies that are being bought and sold are like Amazon fulfillment seller type, type businesses. It's not a face, it's not a YouTuber, it's not somebody driving traffic to a specific website in order to generate a sale, which is what I do at Enemy. And so we had a call, I gave him all my information, and he's like, yeah, this is a kind of a, a tricky thing, you know? And, and we started going down the rabbit hole of, of traffic. Where does the traffic come from? It's not just about you know, doing money and sales. It's not about the profit margin. How are you getting the traffic? Why would somebody be interested in buying this company? Now in my head, I'm like, yo, I've got a lot of cool things about Enemy. If somebody wanted to bring in and, and sort of create a brand, it's a great brand, it would be a sexy brand or a great addition. If somebody already had like an apparel company, but they wanted to kind of like go a little bit, you know, accessories or whatever, they could possibly like, like absorb Enemy into the fold. So. Anyway, apparently that's not what the type of buyers that they have at, at Empire Flippers. So he's like, all right, went over everything. He's like, would you possibly be interested in like a, a stage or a staggered like buyout over the course of a few years where you're still involved in order to, I'm like, yeah, you know, let's just talk. Like, let's, let's see. Now at this point, I kind of knew. I'm like, the writing is on the wall. The only, I should say, the reason why somebody would not buy this company is the reason why it has been successful. And that is because I, Aaron Marino, Alva M, the YouTuber, talks about it, pitches it, and sells products. And this is something that is not scalable for somebody if they don't have me, they don't have my platform, they don't have my messaging. And so he's like, let me talk to my people, my staff. If there's a deal to be made, I want to make a deal. A little sketchy. <laughs> That's kind of the feeling that I got after talking to these guys. But we had another call a few days later, and he's like, yeah, the whole team agrees that, that it's a great business, it's a great product, but nobody is going to want, in our network, would want to buy this in order to you know, buy it and have this a business because without you, it really doesn't work. And I kind of came to that conclusion, I knew that. So back to the drawing board. I was relieved. If I'm being honest, I was relieved because you know, here's the thing. I love this brand and this company, but it was something where, I guess, if I'm being honest with you guys, because this is a business vlog, I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed the past few months, a little bit overwhelmed, and I'm like, all right, what can I kind of take off of my plate in order to just get a little bit of my time back and feel a little bit better and, and, and this and that, and the heavy lifting that is going to be required in order to really build this brand into a multiple million dollar brand is going to be heavy and it's going to be hard. 
And I already have a lot of heavy, hard things that I've been doing. And so I was like, all right, like, what could I do? Now, the other thing that I've been kind of considering is, all right, if I'm going to still be involved, because that's the other thing that I think about. Like, if I ever have the opportunity, you know, if we end up selling, you know, someday Tej Hanley, right, that goes away. And then maybe someday I sell, you know, Pete and Pedro, and that goes away. It's like, I need something. I need a brand. An enemy is an amazing brand, an amazing brand name. And if I were to ever come out with apparel, like, it works. It just fits a lot of different sort of genres in order to... Like it's a great name and so it's great branding and, and I feel like I could do a lot with it if I had the time and the energy to focus on it. And so in my head, I'm thinking, all right, someday in three years from now, five years from now, you know, what is my life going to look like as an entrepreneur? What am I going to be doing? Where am I going to be? What's it look like? I know that I'm always going to need a project. And like I said, the company right now is doing really well, right? And, and that's, that's the crazy thing. I, I've talked about the fashion anchor before where I, I just gave it back to my partner, Brian, with it. I said, here, it was making me like $100,000 a year, like take home. You know, that's a lot of money, but it wasn't a lot of money in relation to the amount of work that I had to put into it versus everything else that I had going on and the you know, ROI of my time. And so Enemy is kind of in that situation, but it's a much more profitable and much more sort of revenue grossing business and one that I'm much more passionate about. Like, I love this brand. I love this company. And so I'm just coming on and, and telling you kind of something that I've been dealing with. And so where I'm at with Enemy, I'm keeping it and I am going to double down and try to look for somebody that's going to help Paul and I take it to that next level. I need people that can get shit done and 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 have a vision and have the ability to actually make things happen. A uh, perfect example is, is Mike Levy, right? Mike Levy, Pete and Pedro came in, made a difference. Paul has made a difference, but I feel that the two of us, Paul and I, could use some strategic partner or somebody to help us sort of take this to the next level or you know insights or something. So if you think you can have help enemy get to the next level or you want to talk about it, please send me an email at info at aramarino.com and somebody will get back to you. Now let's get back to your business questions. All right, so the first business question actually is that enemy kind of segue and it's from our friend. Good to see you. Good to see you again, my friend. He says, hey, Alpha. Thanks so much for your response to one of my previous questions. I took your advice from my clothing brand and started to double down on running pop-up shops in my local area. It's been great for generating revenue, but I still want to learn how to grow my business online. If you were, to start, if you were starting Enemy Shades from scratch without your platform as an influencer, where would you start in terms of online marketing and trying to generate sales thanks? So first off, Thank you so much for telling me about these pop-up shops. It's amazing that you're doing that and, and good for you. And the cool thing, if you're willing to actually roll up your sleeves and do the pop-up shops, there is no doubt that you're going to be successful because this is something that's not easy to do for a lot of people going, setting up a shop and doing it. So congratulations. You know, in terms of me setting up or starting enemy without my platform, again, what I would probably do is try to create, well, first, I wouldn't have made the sunglasses as high quality. And this is something and one of the, one of the things that I've run into and why the, the paid traffic is hard for this brand. And that is because I made them too high quality for the price. And so these aren't like super cheap, cheap glasses. And then, you know, all in and landed, I don't have a crazy margin that I get to play with with paid traffic. So that being said, what I would have done is probably if I were just starting a brand, like, like a sunglass brand, and I'm like, all right, what do I want to do? I want to sell. I want to sell them online. There have been examples of companies that have done it really well and then basically just had like ads and, and did a lot of Facebook advertising. Um, off the top of my head, there is one called uh, something William Painter. I believe they did one. They did a lot of sales, but their glasses are cheap, right? But they've got the margin. Another one is something, I, I forget the name of it, but uh, Tom Brady, I think, is like a spokesperson or something. Anyway, I would have made them cheaper, and that way I would have had better margins in order to figure out some type of, of hook in terms of sunglasses, because that's the thing. I needed a hook, right? I need a hook other than, yo, I'm Alpha M. These glasses are badass. You're going to love them, and the price is ridiculous for the quality. And so for you, being an, a, an apparel company, you know, what is the story? What is setting you apart? Why are your clothing better than, you know, whomever? Or what is your story? And so what I would probably do is look to create some type of really sexy, like quick, 
attention grabbing sort of like top funnel video, right? You got to start thinking like top funnel and then figure out the platform to actually use. Now, something I just found out is that TikTok, I think I just found this out today. I got an email. TikTok now is allowing, I believe if you've got an account on TikTok and a Shopify account, they're like merging some weird like, like ability. And so you can actually, if you have an account or a, you're a, you have, you know, your apparel brand has like a TikTok, you can actually link to your store, which makes TikTok now a viable sales mechanism, which is great. But um, Instagram, another great one. So for me, what I would probably recommend is try to possibly create some type of social platform you know, whether or not it's Instagram and TikTok, I'd probably choose both of them and then start posting sexy pictures, tag them appropriately and see if you can gain some traction there. And then hopefully if you do, then, then develop your email list, grow a big email list so that every time you have a drop, you're getting people to basically come to your, uh, your site and, um, and buy stuff. And so create a platform or a profile for your platforms, Instagram and TikTok, create content, email newsletter, some type of incentive to sign up at discount code or whatever, and then try to grow it. And then try to create some type of top funnel content that will feed the beast. But great question and congratulations. If that didn't make sense, re-ask your question and maybe I can clarify. The next business question is from Andrew G. He says, hey Aaron, I work for a small medical device business in sales. When I close my first account and receive my first PO, is it weird that I printed out the PO receipt, took it home, hung it on the fridge? Do you remember your first PO um, or series of big POs? Isn't the feeling of having sales or commission come in after doing all the hard work so close to, uh, so work so close, uh, the account, anyway, he feels amazing. He printed out the PO, printed it out. Do I think this is crazy or amazing? Let me show you something. Can you see that? You know what this is? This is a receipt to when I paid off my mortgage. I went in and I was like, yo, it was actually on my birthday. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do something that I've never thought that I would ever be able to do. And so I went in to chase the bank and I said, hey, I'm here to actually pay off my mortgage. And they're like, okay, write us a check for like 200. It was $261,000, 406 and 60 cents. And so I kept the receipt because it was a big moment in my life and it was awesome. So do I get it? I get it. In terms of PO, I don't remember my POs because I never had a PO with my business. It's always pretty much been me selling online, but I get it. Congratulations, you are a rock star. Well done. The next business question comes from our friend Asim Momin. He says, hey Aaron, been watching for a long time, but my first time commenting. Well, thank you. If you've got a business question, start with business question and ask your question. Each week we try to get to a few of them for those of you who have a question. Anyway, good to see you, brother. He says, been watching for a long time, first comment. Okay, I own a denim company called Days of September. Um, we're doing very well in terms of sales, but I'm having issues scaling and more specifically getting influencers to respond to, uh, to me for promotions. This could be partly because our following numbers on social media don't reflect our sales. So many might not take me seriously. However, it's a catch 22 when it's hard to grow a following. It's hard to grow a following without influencers. What advice do you have in getting more creators on board? Um, I know this is a long question. The second part of the question is also a great question. And so I kind of feel obligated to just touch on it real quick. He says, part two of this would be the importance of influencer marketing versus traditional social media marketing in the beginning. This is our second year around of business. Should I spend time trying to learn Facebook and Google ads or just outsource it to a professional? I know this is a whole video worth of question, so feel free to pick one. So. I think you definitely need to really spend some time, you know, understanding and, and learning this whole like paid advertising, you know, the influencer market and realm, if you can get good value from people is great, but it's expensive, you know, advertising on Facebook and YouTube or YouTube or Instagram or wherever is also expensive or Google is expensive. But if you can figure out that mechanism and get that, you know, that average order value down, or that or I should say that customer acquisition cost down, it's a more scalable thing than the influencer um, network, if I'm being honest. Now, in terms of you sitting there and trying to learn it, I would say that it's gonna take you a long time and you're gonna waste a lot of money trying to figure that out. What I would do is try to look for somebody, whether or not it's somebody young who has like a small agency, 
or you know look for somebody that that does have proficiency in that area but the paid traffic game like influencers can be a huge money suck if you don't hit it right or find the right partner or messaging but in terms of you trying to do it yourself i probably wouldn't do that but it definitely is important probably more important than influencers the next business question is awesome and it's in relation to last week's vlog. Actually, let me let me show you something. So last week I talked about the new business that Area 627, myself, Ryan Masters, Antonio Centeno, and Eric Banholtz invested in called Dispatch Cycling, right? All right, so this is a tin that I got when I actually placed my order for my very own headset cap. Inside, you get this cool little sticker, right? And then check it out. I did my very own custom headset cap, even though I don't have a mountain bike. It says Alpha M, get to work. Anyway, um, that's just so awesome. Uh, anyway, whoa, whoa, all right. This this next business question has to do with, with this. I, last week, I talked about the, the, the business. If you guys missed it, um, we'll probably link to it down below. It's just last week's vlog. Anyway, he says, uh, and our friend, his name is Warhawk. He says, Aaron, don't you think revealing the manufacturing price to your potential customers and telling them to go buy them is actually not a good idea in terms of business? Yeah, it's not a great idea, but I did it on this vlog. Last week, I told you about why we love this business dispatch and the fact that the profit margin in this there is really good, right? The die that he uses to cut this, the cost is like 50 cents somewhere around there, but we're selling them for like $20 because it's a custom you know, thing. It comes in a nice kit. It comes with bolts and stuff like that. Anyway, do I think it's a bad idea to tell people that it doesn't cost that much to, to, to buy it or to, to make it? and then ask you to buy it? Yeah, I think it's a horrible idea. I did it because this is a business vlog and I just wanna add value. And so I wanted to explain why we feel like this business is an incredible business. Should I have told the exact price? I don't really think about it that way. I just wanna give value and hopefully you guys dug the vlog and you understand why we're so excited about the company Dispatch. That is where I am gonna wrap this vlog up. There were a few other business questions. We went a little bit long today because I really wanted to dive into this whole idea of selling a business because I really feel there may be some value there for you, hopefully, potentially, one day, selling a business or at least having the opportunity to think about it. Guys, if you've got a business question or if I missed your question, copy and paste it into this vlog or simply ask it. Start it with business question and then ask your question. Next week, we'll try to get to more of them. We'll also give you an incredible Tiege Hanley update. Guys, thank you so much for hanging and rolling with us at Tiege. We love you more than our double monk trap shoes and you have an amazing weekend. Guys, be safe, don't do anything stupid, and remember to always stay handsome.